Hello, Paul Jurgens, Exmark Director of Customer Service here with some exciting news regarding a twin cylinder engine that will be used on our Quest in the 2015 model year and beyond. Exmark Customer Service will own the support and warranty on this engine and all engine service parts as well as complete engines will also be provided by Exmark. This engine has several features that are innovative and new to engines in this class of high-end consumer zero-turn products. Let's take a look at the air intake system. The hinge cover makes for easy access to check the filter periodically. The air filter itself pops out without tools. We utilize a two-stage filter with the outer foam wrap for increased protection from dirt ingestion. This is a pretty standard setup that works well and gives the engine the protection it needs from potential dirt ingestion. Installing the filter is really simple. You simply slide it in. If you don't get it in all the way, the cover forces it into place. There is really no way to put it in wrong. Another feature is the air box the air filter sits in. The lower shelf is actually angled down and away from the engine. With three air intakes strategically placed, the dirt and debris can easily slide outward from the compartment. The compartment has positive airflow being injected through these three openings from the overflow air being drawn in by the blower fan bolted to the flywheel. That airflow is generated by the spinning flywheel when the engine is running. One of the coolest features is the oil drain mechanism. The oil can be drained without the aid of any tools. The hose slips onto a fitting and is then captured by this zigzag retainer bracket. When the oil is drained and the hose is reinstalled, you can simply remove and replace the oil filter, add the new oil, and the job is finished. You might say it's so easy a caveman can do it. The collar on the hose prevents the hose from being pulled off the fitting even if we snag a branch or a bush while mowing. Someday, chances are you're going to find the battery dead, so we even provide a ground lug for the negative connection of the battery charger or jumper cables. Now let's dig a little deeper into the engine. Remove the air filter and the oil drain hose. Loosen the six bolts securing the shroud. Now we can more clearly see the three debris relief ports as well as the air filter chamber with its slanted floor. If you need to replace the air filter cover, flip the shroud over, pull the hair pins and the hinge pins, and install a new air filter cover. With the shroud off, you have easy access to items like the coils and the carburetor area. Periodically removing the shroud also allows us to use compressed air to blow out dirt and debris that in time collects around the cooling fins of the heads. Before doing this, simply slip the air filter onto the two intake horns of the intake manifold to keep dirt from entering the engine. Keeping this area clean will significantly increase the life of the engine. Looking at the intake itself, you can see that we have a cast aluminum intake and the dual barrel carburetor. Notice the design where the filter mates. The lower part of the horn is recessed so dirt laying at the top falls past the horn versus into the engine. Other engines in this class have a single barrel carburetor. All intake air flows through a single passage and then the intake stroke of the engine draws the fuel and air mixture into the cylinder. On our engine, we have a two-barrel carburetor. Each intake passage pulls air all the way from the air filter and into each independent cylinder. Each cylinder draws the desired fuel and air mixture, which is then ignited on the compression stroke, making for a stronger, more efficient running engine. The other feature we designed into the carburetor is the choke system. When the customer pulls up on the cable, choke is on. Butterfly closes, engine starts, then the vacuum of the engine will open up the choke and the engine will not sputter and overload. Even if you forget to release the choke lever, the engine will do it for you. Now let's talk about the cylinder heads. We use a cast aluminum valve cover for enhanced sealing between the valve cover and the head to reduce the chance of oil leaks in this area. It has the standard valve configuration of an overhead valve but the combustion chamber is designed at an angle. 
you can see the valve train is also at an angle and the spark plug is at the start of the combustion zone and it tapers out from there. When the plug fires on the combustion stroke, just before the cylinder reaches top dead center, it gets the maximum downforce and thrust on the piston. Please notice we have five bolts securing the head to the engine block, others use four. The cylinder has a cast iron sleeve insert like some engines used to have and the gasket has a much larger surface area. The five bolt attachment and the wider gasket reduce the likelihood of blowing head gaskets leading to more catastrophic engine failures. The cast iron sleeve, which appears to be about 3 16 of an inch thick, should allow for this engine to be honed or bored using an oversized set of rings or a new larger OD piston set. Another innovative feature is the airflow port cast into both heads allowing cooling air to be injected through the cavity, further reducing the cylinder head temperatures. Next we will rotate the engine and show you the underside. Here is where you will find the oil pump is held in place with a heavy steel plate. The oversized roller pump itself pumps oil as it rotates, sending pressurized oil flow to critical components. Because it's at the lowest part of the chamber, it's going to give you oil pressure even if the oil level is low in the engine. While not a good situation, if there is any oil left in the engine, it will still give you oil flow to critical components. We have now removed the sump and slid the sump off the crankshaft. We use a complete gasket versus a more common silicone sealant to minimize the chance of oil leaks between the sump and the engine block. Notice the oil drain hose is at the lowest point of the block and these other cavities are cross drilled so that the used oil can drain through and come out the oil hose. The governor spool uses three flywheel weights rather than two, giving us better governor response and quicker recovery when the engine is loaded down under heavier cutting conditions. Look how robust the governor shaft is, which adds to the responsiveness and makes adjustments easier. When the engine is running, the fresh oil goes through a screened intake into the oil pump. The camshaft drives the oil pump and the oil flows through a passage to the oil filter. From the oil filter, it's returned and goes through another passage to feed the lower crankshaft bearing and then to the connecting rod journals and their corresponding bearings. Oil also flows through another passage to the upper crankshaft bearing. Little things like the chamfered holes in the crankshaft journal ports enhance oil flow to the connecting rod journals. That's your pressure lube loop. The valve train area under the valve cover gets lubrication oil from oil splash in the crankcase area and the head has a relief port for this oil to drain back into the crankcase area. Looking at the piston and connecting rods themselves, we have taken our design from the automotive industry. They have less mass and less inertia as it's running. As with all pistons, they have a three ring configuration with a compression ring, scraper ring, and an oil ring. Take note of the rod size in the journal area. The other component in the assembly we want to discuss is the camshaft. It uses a nylon gear on the metal shaft. The gear itself is nylon for two reasons. One, because it's less mass, it doesn't weigh as much, so it gives less load on the engine as it's rotating. The other value of the nylon gear is that it's much quieter running against the metal gear of the crankshaft. Think about how long we have been asking engine OEMs to provide a more permanent identification for the engine's serial number than just a decal. Well, we did it on this one. The engine part number and serial number are stamped into the block in addition to a decal. It's not easily visible with the engine mounted, nor do we necessarily want it to be, but it's there as a permanent identification. Let's recap the key features of the new engine. It will be used exclusively on the 2015 Model Quest this year and then could be expanded into other models. The key features include the easy to use oil drain hose, the air box design and the air intake system, 
the cast aluminum intake, and the dual barrel carburetor with the vacuum choke release. So that's Exmark Engine 101 and we thank you for your time. We hope you found the information helpful and that this will increase your comfort level in selling and supporting the new Exmark Engine. Might we have a glitch or two along the way? I'd expect it, but we will work through those issues the same way we do any other product issue. Thank you and God bless.